Hey Virgo, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is going to be your Christmas reading. That's Christmas Eve, 24th, and the 25th, which is Christmas Day. There's an eyelash. All right. I'm going to pull four cards from the Light Seers Tarot for Virgo. So Moon Rising and Venus. <sighs> for December 24th to the 25th. Let's see what's going on in love and romance for Virgo. First card's you, Virgo. Second card is your love interest. Third card is a situation. Fourth card is the outcome. Then I'll pull some clarifiers. As in, how do you feel about them? How do they feel about you? And then challenges and obstacles for both of you. So this is for you, Virgo. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. In love and romance. For those of you who are together, not together, someone you have your eye on, whoever you're thinking about, this is for you, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th. I'm going to cut the deck. Boom, boom, boom. All right. <clears throat> First card represents you, Virgo. Nice. The wheel. This is your love interest, possibly younger than you. There's the Page of Pentacles situation. Four of Cups, and the outcome, King of Pentacles. On the bottom, we have Judgment. Now I'm going to use the Muse Tarot, also by Chris Ann Donnelly, and I'm going to pull some clarifying cards. First card is how you feel about them. Second card is how they feel about you. Third card is your challenge or obstacles, and the fourth card is their challenges or obstacles. All right, challenge or obstacle. This is for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th, please. Can we get okay, almost? Can we please get <clears throat> the rest of the reading for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> so this is you. Um, for how you feel about them, moon, how they feel about you, strength, nice, okay, and then how, uh, what your challenge or obstacle is in this situation, is six of swords or six of voices and their challenge or obstacle, death, all right, and the bottom of the deck, there's the king of swords or the muse of voices, as they call it in this deck. So it just looks like for the Wheel of Fortune that there's something changing, a new shift, a new cycle coming into your life. It's a major arcana card, as is death, the moon, and strength. So these are fate cards. That speaks to having major influence um, where free will has less to do with these cards. Okay, for three, of, four of cups or six of swords, things like that, there is free will involved where you can change the course like this. But with the uh, fate cards... It is something that's destined. There's car karma involved, okay, for these. Major karma. Okay, so for the Wheel of Fortune, it just looks like whatever's been going on in your life, you're already open and knowing that there is a huge change coming in. So if you've been single and bored, that's what it looks like. There's going to be a change to this. Um, that's the cycle um, that we're talking about. This might not come into effect for 24th to 25th. It's just saying you're ready for it. You're already in the process of it. <clears throat> Now, for the love interest, it says Page of Pentacles. This could speak to somebody who uh, might be younger than you, an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, who's trying to offer you a relationship um, or a message or a commitment. <clears throat> but the situation here is Four of Cups. And that means that even though there's this offer here, this cup that's being offered, um, it's a sincere offer of that's heart-centered, um, love, love. Um, some kind of, you know, romantic feelings, a romantic gesture, whatever it may be, but you're not really seeing it and you're not interested because you're focused more on the three of cups there. And the three of cups on that side, it's separate from that ace of cups because um, it's speaking to that energy of the three of cups, which is celebratory, um, social, I would say, it is social. This is when you, you were dating um, going out with your friends or someone from your past, something that had to do with other people, okay? And that celebratory energy with the Three of Cups. So missing that, feeling bored, 
This is also a card that often comes up with everybody being at home and trying to isolate and doing all those types of things. Just really just <clears throat> forgetting sometimes about your blessings that your own cup is full and just being stuck on what you're missing out on. And then the outcome is King of Pentacles, which is showing stability. It could be a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn in your life. This is ruled over by Taurus. It could be someone who's very independent because you see this wolf over here that they've drawn. <clears throat> and this King of Pentacles is someone who's older, um, stable, and is able to be generous, kind, giving. Um, this could even be you, Virgo, okay, where you're just comfortable and you're enjoying your life and your security. Uh, this also does have this energy of a married person, an older person, um, being secure and stable. And also the King of Pentacles is ruled over by Taurus, which is also ruled over by Venus. So it looks like you're open, but you're comfortable. Like you see this cycle that's changing. Whoever you've been dealing with, whoever you're thinking about, it's kind of like, it's not even very heartfelt. Um, what you're thinking about, it's kind of, you're, you're bored with it. You're not, you're done with it. It looks like you're focused more on yourself and this new phase for yourself, this new cycle, the new year. Okay. Um, how you feel about them is the moon. Okay. The moon can speak to moodiness, lonely, isolation, depression, um, your mom energy, your intuition, partial illumination, secrets, a secret being revealed, hidden feelings. Um, sometimes it can speak to some kind of like doubt or worry, okay, regarding what you don't know, okay, or some kind of hidden fears or something. Now, how you could think about them, it could be that maybe you're dealing with a cancer even, but this, um, how you feel about them is very um, changing as well. Like even with the moon cycles and the wheel, how it spins and changes, it's, it doesn't look like it's something very solid. For how they feel about you is strength, okay, the strength card. They think um, that you're very attractive. At the same time, they think that you're very independent and strong and that it would be very um, difficult to be able to change your mind or win an argument, let's say, okay, because you're set in your ways with the strength card. For your um, challenge or obstacle is six of voices or six of swords, and that's to leave some kind of toxic um, way of thinking, some toxic situation. So it could be that you're so stuck in this, whatever's happened in the past with the three of cups that were spilt, um, that you need to, your challenge is to leave because the six of swords is leaving the situation, okay? For them, their challenge or obstacle is the death card, okay? That, again, it looks like something that just doesn't, you, you don't walk away from. It's over with the death card. It could speak to Scorpio energy, but let's look at the moon too. But the death card is saying that, you know, something that's over in a new cycle beginning, and that is the challenge. So for both of you, it looks like the challenge is to walk away from this, okay? Even though you're bored with it, it's not really... Um, looks to me like it's not really something that on either side that it's something that you really want to commit to like it, it's a even this commitment that the page is holding it's the page it's very like the starter kind of beginning of this it's not the knight who's looking for their queen to be it's not the king who's you know stable the king is here and I would say that the king of pentacles in this reading would be you because of the wheel because this is a very young energy for the page of pentacles on the bottom of the deck, there's the judgment card, which is speaking to a decision being made. That's going to be uplifting. That's going to give you a new awareness. That's the aha moment, a wake up call. Okay. So coming to some new realization, that's going to be liberating. And then at the same time, on the other bottom of the deck is the king of swords. Could be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. And the king of swords is using logic. Um, and a cool head to decide how to navigate in your love and romance. Okay. Love and romantic life. It's not really coming from like the King of Cups or even the King of Pentacles here is looking to find somebody who's going to fit into their kingdom. The King of Pentacles has that Midas energy. Okay. Sometimes in love and romance, even though they're super generous, benevolent, kind, that Taurus energy ruled by Venus, loving, there is that aspect to the King of Pentacles that is very tied, okay, to their roots, to their family, 
to tradition, to what they've worked hard for. They're so rock solid and that the King of Pentacles wants now to find someone that fits into their world. The King of Pentacles is not like able to change, like let's say the King of Cups or something or the King of Wands. King of Pentacles is very, you know, as a Taurus, is very stuck in their ways, okay? So here is using your mind to figure out what's the next step, what kind of person you need to find, romantically speaking, for yourself. That's where you're at, okay? That's what I'm thinking. So this is the Romance Angels by Doreen Virtue. Can we get an Oracle card for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th, please? This is for Virgo, please. Can we get a Love Oracle card? Some guidance, some advice for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus's love life. What advice is there for Virgo, please? For Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, please. Free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. On the bottom, I'll take a peek. Separation. Time apart from your partners on the horizon. <clears throat> So, yeah, it looks like you're ready to start a new cycle um, with the wheel. And you this is something that's been on your mind. It's not saying that you're going to do this over Christmas, but it's saying that this is where your mind is at over Christmas. And so this is what you're going to put into motion. And that is to <clears throat> have a time, uh, time out for yourself. This could speak to a temporary separation due to travel, traveling for work, or um, a temporary breakup, <clears throat> leaving town. This is what you're thinking about to get some freedom and perspective back in your life with the free yourself card. Okay, so let's pull the Whispers of Love by Angela Hartfield. This is for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th. What <clears throat> guidance or advice is there for Virgo, please? For Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th, please. Ask for help. What is it you really need help with? Be willing to allow yourself the support you need. Let's check on the bottom again. <clears throat> Consider your foundation. You're being asked to look at how committed you are to love. And there's this house here. And it says something on the door. I can't read it. It's too small. Number 50. All right, I'm going to put this here. These are short, so I'll read you both. <clears throat> Ask for help, number 14. So this is, there is a multitude of support for you. You only need to be willing to ask for the help and you will receive it. Let go of fear and pride as they are not benefiting you and giving you what you desire. And then the other one is number 50. <clears throat> Sorry, every time I start reading, man, mind fog and my throat goes. Love means to commit without guarantees. We give ourselves completely in the hope that love will be the lasting result. Love is an act of faith. Surround yourself with love and know that your life will be better for it. And this is how committed you are to love. Look at how committed you are to love. Consider your foundation. All right, Virgo, your final card for this reading is the Believe in Your Own Magic by Amanda Lovelace. <clears throat> Deck. Can you get one last word of advice, one last card for guidance for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 24th to the 25th, please. What does Virgo need to know? Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's pick this one. Ooh, Phoenix has that for a happily ever after. Number nine. And number nine is the number for Hermit, which is ruled over by Virgo. And then we got on the bottom, tree, let them go. Number 18. That could be your family. Okay, because that's that tree, your roots or whatever. Okay, that's being burnt. Could be <clears throat> some kind of issues there. 
or whoever it is that you've built with. So let's see. Number nine first I'll start with. Okay, these are really short. So it says, how's that for happily ever after? And this is the Phoenix, okay? No matter how hopeless you may be feeling at this moment, know this, you can and will survive whatever trials you've been put through. From the ashes of the past, you shall create a storybook ending filled with beauty and resilience. All future flames will cower when they hear the whisperings of your name. Isn't that so badass? All right. Number 18 is the next one. You often take on the pain of others. You used to think it was because you're an empath, but these days you're not so sure. Sometimes it feels like other people are emptying their emotions into you and giving nothing in return. Sometimes we even feel we've inherited pain from those who come before us in our family tree. This is your permission to let go. Your life is ultimately about you, not what other people expect you to carry for them. So there it is. Okay, so... Going your own way, doing what you need to do, and to let go of people who um, don't serve in your best interests. Okay, Virgo? That's a hard thing to hear. I think you guys have gotten this often. So let me put this here and this here. Phoenix, how's that for happily ever after? And this one here, and I'll put this one here. Okay, so there's a lot of this ending energy. There's death here even. Um, is saying to let him go and look for a way to free yourself and surround yourself in um, loving environments because it's hard here with both issues or challenge is to move on, right? And that's what it's saying to do. You need to move on. Okay, a separation travel, it would really help. I think that's already what's on your mind because you've got the Wheel of Fortune here, which is also the number 10 speaking to um, cycle ending, a major cycle ending and a new one beginning. Same with the death card, same with um, separation and the phoenix and the tree. All right, Virgo, sorry that that wasn't a more romantic reading, but, you know, this is just for somebody who needs to hear it. I'm going to have your January readings out for love and romance, and I, if I can, I'm going to try to do a general. All right, thank you for watching, and bye for now.